Welcome to New Mexico Black Rifle Operators Union. I'm your host, Sean. Boy, there's more coming out of this uh, stuff that's going on in New Mexico. You know, our governor really stepped into it this time, and she's done some unconstitutional things. Um, there's been a lot of people, a lot of back and forth about uh, what can be done, what should be done. And the spirit of rebellion is alive and well, as I reported this morning. Um, by the way, today is 9-11, so I'm, I should have recorded last night my condolences to all those that fell victim on 9-11. Um, I think of 9-11 for another reason. It's the day that I actually had the funeral for my little sister. So it's a little bit more of a sobering day for me because loss hit me way after that. Um, and I try just to kind of duck and cover for most of that. But... What I was getting back to is the stuff that's going on in New Mexico. So for all of you that are reporting on this and have not listened to my podcast, please do. Or please talk to uh, a source from New Mexico because it's Bernalillo, not Bernalillo, and it's not Lou John, it's Lujan. So her name is Michelle Lujan Grisham, um, our little tyrant-in-chief, you know, the governor of New Mexico. Uh, And it's Bernalillo, not Bernalillo. So I understand you, you, you guys from everywhere else in the rest of the country um, n- are not from the area, and we have very Spanish names in uh, a lot of our places because it's historically how it's been in New Mexico. Um, but we are, in fact, part of the country, and I thank you guys for reporting on this and highlighting it better because you have larger audiences than I do. Uh, for those of you that are consistently listening to New Mexico Black Rifle Operators Union and what we cover, all 2A topics uh, from the good stuff to the stuff that's not so good when they're trying to uh, persecute us for being fans of the 2A. But if you don't know what's going on, there has been a unofficial, well, it's an official edict from the governor, but an unofficial law. Um, it's not an official law because just because the governor says something and it ne- never went through the roundhouse in New Mexico. So the roundhouse is our house and our Senate in the state of New Mexico. It has not gone through that. She cannot unilaterally uh, declare something without going through the roundhouse is what I believe. Um, other than the health emergency stuff, which we gave them that right during the COVID stuff, which was the stupidest thing, and I've been one of the ones that have been continually saying this was a stupid thing to ever cede this much power to anyone, because it's biting us in the butt. But she has a spokesperson. Her name is Carolyn Sweeney, and there's a, a post going around on Twitter, and it's now hitting the news circuits too, where Carolyn Sweeney says, to ensure officer safety, we will not be providing additional details at this time. But what they were saying in this is that even without the physical presence, the governor's office intends to act. The order is being enforced, and the citation will be forthcoming from the state police, said Carolyn Sweeney. To ensure officer safety, we will not be providing additional details at this time. Multiple people were live streaming the event in Old Town, which turned into an open mic, uh, a mic night, basically lasting several hours for anyone in attendance. What she's insinuating is that she is that the governor's office, through the state of New Mexico PD, is going to be issuing citations based on the people that attended the rally. Because they didn't want to disrupt the rally, knowing that they fully well would have had to have fought these people. She's going to ticket them and cite them for carrying guns in public in Bernalillo County, or more specifically, Old Town, Albuquerque. Now, what I know about citations is the officer has to sign off on the citation. I have never seen one from the state or from even a local citation that the officer themselves did not have to sign off and say who they were citing the citation. What this does is because they removed qualified immunity from law enforcement agencies. This includes the governor's office, the way I understand it from talking to a couple of lawyers. They can now go after that individual officer. Yes, you were cited. You absolutely were cited. And you do have the legal repercussions of all that um, for this 30-day time frame. I am of the volition that this is going to be thrown out because even people that are on the left, you know, David Hogg, um, 
one of the senators from California, who these people are usually not on our side. They are usually very pro um, gun laws, gun restrictions, and disarmament of the civilian populace. But they even said that she's overreached here. As I stated in this morning's podcast, um, where the Hurricane Katrina stuff comes into play for us, is this is a felony. And, you know, I've seen multiple gun tubers talk about um, arresting the governor, that she should be arrested. And I believe that wholeheartedly. Do I believe any of the legal teams or the legal law enforcement agencies in New Mexico willing to do that? No. Um, And the reason why I don't believe that is because they are beholden to the governor. Uh, Whether we like it or not, they hold the power sheet, the governor, when I say they, the governor's office has the power of the purse over these law enforcement agencies. So they would have their budget immediately censured. And for that's why school districts, a lot of the local educational authorities in New Mexico, held to the mask standards even though they didn't agree with them, and the vaccination standards even though they didn't agree with them, is their governor has the power to censure their budget. And with that, that means those entities basically are screwed financially for the term that they're in. Okay, so that's why I don't believe the government will do anything. Um, Law enforcement won't do anything. It would be hugely hilarious, though, if they did it, and it would work in our favor. Um, There are calls also for her impeachment. There are two Republican senators, uh, senators and rep, I believe, actually, um, that are calling for her removal. Um, That is more than what happened the last time when they passed the red flag law stuff. Um, We had to do that on our own. Uh, When I say we, the gun owners of New Mexico had to do that. We had to do all the legwork. We had to knock on doors, get the petition signed. This means that there's probably a little more iron in that glove than what we had back then to try to remove the governor. With this being a popular thing to stand behind um, and this being an election year, um, you know, 2000, uh, 2023, you're already seeing the the local elections coming up. This is something that a lot of the local officials that are looking to get elected could stand behind and get people in their side and get their vote if they're willing to act. And that's the big thing. You know, I am not as black-pilled as some of my friends and some of my listeners who believe that the government is 100% screwing us or 100% unsalvageable. I do, however, feel it's slightly fallen, if not fully, completely fallen. Um, We have a little bit of time left, I believe, to act and do something to save our republic. Um, Part of it has to do with this type of action right now. This is where we need to be very active. You know, that protest was a good sign. It shows that rebellion is alive in New Mexico. It shows that people are tired of having these edicts pushed down on them. And the people that wanted to be left alone are finally standing up and wanting something done. And this is what has to be done. In in conjunction to what's happening with people getting tired of this, there are no less than four court cases that have been filed um, on New Mexico gun owners' behalf. One of them was is with GOA, Gun Owners of America. Again, this is one of those organiza- organizations I believe we should support. One of them is National uh, Firearms Policy Coalition. Um, that isn't uh, the normal one that I recommend all the time, or the Na- National Second Amendment Foundation. That's what it is. I'm sorry. And then the other two, I'm, I don't know of what they are. They're probably individual. One of them's an individual. And maybe the NRA finally gets up and goes, oh, yeah, by the way, we need to do something here. But the blowback from this has even hit Bernalillo County, or specifically Albuquerque's um, people in power. Let's just put it that way. The mayor says they're not going to enforce this. Their district attorney, which was appointed by the governor of New Mexico, said they're not going to enforce this. The chief of police for Albuquerque, which I reported on earlier, has said we're not going to enforce this. What's funny about that one is he's the one that was actually speaking on behalf of law enforcement in favor of red flag laws. 
So something has happened recently where he realizes he's on the hook now. And I'm guessing that when he took over Albuquerque PD, that he realized how screwed up they were and why they're under federal uh, watch right now, that he knows he's walking the line. He knows that he needs his constituents in Albuquerque proper to uh, keep his job, and that's probably why he's trying to do this. But he's not a fan of the 2A. Um, He is one of those people that was looking at getting red flag laws passed uh, before he was chief of Albuquerque PD, he is, he later became uh, police chief of Albuquerque PD. He is someone to be watched for in Albuquerque if you're one of those people that live in Albuquerque that's listening to this broadcast. So be on the lookout for, you know, Medina for sure. Now, the, the sheriff of Bernalillo County, his response, as I read yesterday, is pretty tepid, where he's more so worried about the his deputies being sued. Um, that's a good thing, despite what a lot of law enforcement agents that I know were really worried about qualified immunity uh, being removed from them. This shows that if you're a turd, you're going to get it lit up, and you're going to get lit up because you deserve it. And for anyone that's willing to write the citation or arrest anyone who is just carrying out their God-given right of self-defense, they deserve everything that they're getting thrown at them. So I understand the heartburn of losing taxpayer money, so to speak, for some of these institutions. But unless we make them pay, and pay dearly, they're going to continue this line of thought, and they're going to continue to go after us in the 2A. Now, what do I think is, why do I think the governor's doing this? I think it's a couple things here. Number one, I think she's looking for her next gig after she leaves the governor's office. And I believe fully that she, uh, you're not hearing from every town. You're not hearing from the Giffords Foundation. If you don't know what those are, they're very big anti-gun for, uh, foundations. The Gifford Foundation is the, for, well, is the sitting representative for Arizona, Gabby Giffords, who was shot in the head at one of her rallies by a lunatic Uh, because that's how gun violence usually happens is by a lunatic or someone who has no locus of control to uh, that is going to perpetrate an evil act anyway Um, in the 24 hours that is that this has been going on or this 48 hour period since friday there's been at least one killing one shooting in albuquerque so by her own admission by the governor's own admission this was not going to stop criminals so did this stop anything? No. Okay? All it did stop was that an average citizen who would probably follow the law couldn't carry and defend themselves. I believe they have a legal case if something were to happen to them that they could sue APD as well as the governor, and I'm saying going after the governor by name. Because, again, if you look at case precedents from before... You know, I'm not a fan of Scientologists uh, because I think they're kind of a cult. Um, Whether you like them or not, that's up to you. You do you, boo. But what I noticed and what I learned from Scientology is when they went after people and legal organizations, they went so far as to go after individuals. And that started winning them court cases. That's what we have to do. And now that qualified immunity is a memory for these law enforcement agents that are going to do this, it's time to make the Gestapo pay. Because state New Mexico State PD now has that reputation of being the Gestapo. We saw it during the COVID stuff where they came and shut down businesses, and New Mexico will never recover from the businesses and institutions we lost because of the COVID, uh, the harsh COVID reaction we had here. Now, I've seen some leftists. There was one anti-gun person at the rally as opposition, and he wore a mask. That should tell you enough. There's enough people that are, you know, still masking up um, for virtue points because they don't realize it's not going to do anything. Now, I understand if you're working for, like, a hospital and you're masking up. That's probably because it's their type of thing, and you're working around sick people, and even if it doesn't actually do anything... It shows the people, the patients specifically, that maybe you're trying the best you can, even if you're just the guy pushing the food cart, that you're trying to do something. You know, that makes sense to me a little bit. 
But for anyone else, it makes no sense to me because they've proven time and time again that the virus is too small. And even the CDC has said that if they will not stop smoke particles, which are dramatically larger than virus particles, even the N95 masks, they're not going to stop the virus itself. So the only place I could see that being a case, you know, if you're going to virtue signal, maybe it's around patients that are already dying and already, com- uh, you know, immunocompromised and they're already in the hospital for a reason, then it makes sense that maybe you'd wear a mask and maybe you'd make an effort, extra effort to wash your hands and stuff because you're trying to keep as much of the bad stuff outside of the, the hospital. So that makes a little more sense to me than anywhere else, but it doesn't make sense in a huge way in a lot of places. And I'm not one of those people, conformists, that's saying, hey, you know, whatever. I honestly don't care about the mask. If you want to wear a mask, go ahead. What it does is it signals to most of us on the right side, uh, you know, the red side, I would say, or those of us that have basically had enough of this crap and have done the research, that it's not going to help you. It really isn't. You're just virtue signaling to your own crowd. And if that's what you want to do, more power to you. Because the reality is... Carrying a gun is an individual uh, right also. Most of those people that are so afraid of this virus, and we're all going to get it again, we're all going to catch it again, despite whatever vaccination you had, you're going to get it again because, well, it's endemic. You know, they the reason why the restrictions went away is they finally realized it's endemic. We knew that years ago, no offense. We knew that shortly after it got here that eventually we were all going to have to deal with it. And whether you got the shots or not, you're still going to have to deal with it. Okay? That's where it spills over. That's where the governor got her power to do this. And this is where every one of us that was pissed off that the governor was able to declare a state of emergency for this type of thing and shut down churches, shut down schools, shut down hospitals from treatment, you know, delay treatment, in my dad's case, delayed treatment for his cancer that we didn't even know he had. It took six times for them to figure out my dad had cancer. What could have happened if he was not afraid to go to the doctor right after the COVID stuff hit? Maybe my dad would still be here. So you're damn right I'm a little bit pissed off and bitter about my governor. But I'm more so pissed off and bitter is that she's trying to do these executive actions to every one of us. And she's doing this in Albuquerque because it's the biggest city in New Mexico. And she's doing this as a test case to see if she can get farther. You know, I purposely, I I really do think she's trying to find her next gig. She cannot run for governor again. If she gets impeached, that would be the best thing possible for New Mexico because it would show that anyone that stands up there and does something stupid, we're finally having enough and we're willing to weaponize and use lawfare just as much as they are against us. And that's what's got to change. We need to get rid of these people that'll say they're going to do something and then they absolutely don't do anything. And it doesn't matter what political party they're from. This is why the Libertarian Party is gaining so much ground in New Mexico is because we've seen both sides of the coin and nothing changes and if you're wanting to make your bones in the the government right now you have a very golden opportunity just by doing what the hell you say you're going to do go after these people we're all tired of it every one of us and it's not just the 2A it is everything that we see you say you're going to do this this and this you get in and you ignore everyone that helped put you there Now's the time, if you're really, really wanting to be in that position, and you're really willing to stand behind your word and do everything you possibly can and document how you're doing it and letting the civilians, the citizens of New Mexico see that, now's your time to shine. All these people that have been in there for years, for years that have done nothing, now's the time that they go away. Now's the time that they, if they're willing to sit here and say this is just a stunt and they're not willing to get off their butt and do something, they need to go away. Because now's the time we can strike why the iron's hot and we can get enough people backing us because everyone, especially in the 2A community, 
is extremely pissed off. And I've seen it on social media, which social media is a very poor reflection of the actual populace. Because what you see in social media is a lot of people that are stuck in the culture war who are very active in that little endeavor. They see what's going on. But the average American or the average New Mexican doesn't stay on Twitter, doesn't stay on Facebook, does not. they don't care. They're disengaged. They want to watch their ball game, and they want to go ahead about their business. Now's the time we rub it in their face. We show them exactly what the hell is going on. And the first step was that protest. I hope to see more of them happen, and not just the local protest here. They need to be in Albuquerque, because that's the county, that's the city that's being affected by this. Like, share, subscribe, comment, be great.